Hi, Kirsty Young here. You might want raised garden beds for a couple of reasons. The first one might be access. If you have difficulty bending over or getting down to the ground, then you might want beds that are waist high. But these take a lot of filling, which can be done in various ways, but this is not the scope of this video. The other reason, which is my reason, is because of poor drainage and soil that is less than ideal. So this is how I make raised garden beds. This flat area next to the house is our vegetable garden. During the house build there was a lot of clay and subsoil brought up in amongst it all. In addition, when the fence was put in, the tractor that was here digging the post holes uh, compacted the ground a lot as well. We had a lot of large rocks, boulders, that I had moved into their final resting place while the digger was in here as well. So a lot of compaction, a lot of subsoil brought up, which makes for not great drainage. We did use some leftover boards from the house build but unfortunately I didn't really leave enough room for the mower to get between the beds with the first ones we made so they were, were a bit of a pest. I ended up pulling them out and this section here where there's a wood chip was A. uneven and a pain for the mower B not enough room for the mower to get through right up the far end and see this area right here at the beginning of the path just held water it just couldn't get away whatever's under there just made it waterlogged so the solution was to put in all these wood chips so the bed here where there is garlic coming through amongst all those little weeds also coming up is actually a raised bed even though it doesn't look like it. Another raised garden bed is this cut off 44 gallon drum otherwise known as a 200 litre drum. This has been in use for a few years now so the bottom is starting to rust out. You can use all sorts of things for raised garden beds. It doesn't have to be very high off the ground to give you the drainage that you need, which was our issue as well as the subsoil. I was gifted these frames. I don't know what they were in their former life, but they make excellent garden beds. This was a single bed bed frame. You can see the foot um, at this end the other end doesn't have a foot because the bed head was attached the, to that. I haven't used that as yet. I'm still thinking of a way to use it. The other day I came across a couple of drawers out of an old cupboard that got dismantled and I thought, oh here we go, new extension. So this is how I start my new raised garden beds. I have emptied the contents of the compost or scrap bucket in there it's just whatever was in there but I make sure there's nothing that's going to sprout or become an issue um, it, that's unlikely because we don't really put anything in our scrap bucket that would be an issue there is a lot of paper there I line the scrap bucket with the paper to help keep the bucket clean and that's fine that one even has a tissue. Again, no big deal. I kept aside a little bit of the last sort of topsoil. It's actually a topsoil compost blend that I bought from the landscaping supply people. This will do well to top up these new miniature garden beds. That wooden base will rot down in time, which will be fine. Because these are such small beds I'm not going to put a lot of organic matter in here I have added some uh, tops of wild radish that likes to grow in my garden I have put a house brick here 
to block this off because this will actually be part of the bed as well. So that can all just go in there. There's a bit of clover in here doing its redemptive work of repairing the soil. grass, a bit of whatever else, and then the topsoil. One of the boys took this little spade to the beach and they broke the handle. But I tell you what, it's still very handy. Sometimes a trowel is just too small. The level of this bed will settle. You can see in this one here that it has settled as well. Once all that's harvested, I will top that up. While I'm at it, I'll put in some half finished compost. And that can finish off during these colder months. So here are the new beds. As I said, organic matter on the bottom, a bit of half finished compost, which introduces a lot of valuable uh, microfaunae. And there were earthworms in that and the topsoil, which I added as well that will settle but I can top it up I won't use this now until after the last frost which to my mind is not till after Melbourne Cup Day the first Tuesday in November that's our last month of spring I could even leave it later it's not as if I don't have other garden beds I can get on with I'll play it by ear the other thing to watch for with this is that the beds have wooden bases which will take longer to rot down so that will be interesting to see how that goes. I might even have to punch a couple of holes in the bottom for drainage but we'll see. This bed was started the same way. It had lots and lots of off cuts especially from last year's silver beet. All the big long things that were too big to put in the compost heap as they were and would require cutting up which I didn't feel like doing they just got laid down in here that all got left for um, probably a couple of months I wasn't going to use the bed this year but then I decided I wanted uh, somewhere for these winter vegetables so I added some topsoil which I actually brought in I bought it and added my own compost as well then I let that sit for another month or more maybe six weeks even before planting out the seeds I haven't fed it or done anything else since then I had a lot of trouble with the uh, cabbage white butterfly last year and then the grubs on my cabbages so this time I got smart and used this old uh, clothes horse which had has broken bits to prop up the net when the butterflies had all gone and these had grown up enough and were no longer at risk I took the netting off but I have left the, the trellises there and we are now being rewarded with our first little heads of broccoli and the cabbages are starting to heart up 
There are a few holes you can see, but I can live with that. After throwing so many stalks from the old mature silver beet that I didn't want anymore into here, it was inevitable that there would be seedlings coming up. I pulled them all out, bar this one, which I will allow to grow. As you can see, we've been harvesting from it already. Um, it's June now, which is the first month of winter here in Australia. These beds were made in a similar way, but not with as much organic matter in the bottom because I wanted to use them sooner rather than later. Um, we finished harvesting carrots out of the one in the foreground, but we still have some leftover lettuces uh, from summer, the cos lettuce, which is what I grow in summer. So really, you can use anything to make raised garden beds. All it has to do is give a little bit of height, say a brick height, and be around for a long time. It won't rot down in the first season or two. Um, here's the, the base for said bed. I'm going to use this as a trellis come summertime.